Okay guys, now in case you didn't know yet, Shimano and Shimano USA just did the unexpected and dropped a huge bomb on us. And that huge bomb comes in the form of the Shimano Corrado DC. Now there's very few pictures on it, so you're going to be seeing these same pictures over and over, but uh, I'm sure you don't care. Now I first got wind of the Corrado DC yesterday when a sharp-eyed subscriber commented, his name's Grand Fishing, um, apparently he was uh, snooping over in Shimano Europe's website for some reason, and he came across a listing for a Corrado DC. And so I went over to check that out and I found it odd that they would be selling a Corrado DC in Europe. And the reason being is Europe, um, most of them use spinning gear. Like bait casting gear is very, uh, hardly anyone uses it in Europe, apparently. So I thought it was odd that they would be releasing a Corrado DC in Europe but not here in America. And of course, I didn't see any kind of listing in Japan either. So, what Shimano did today was they released a video, which I'm going to link in the description, as well as a couple of other Corrado DC videos. Um, so you can, guys can check out the awesome DC braking system. Um, but yeah, and it's also listed on Tackle Warehouse. And I put my pre-order in. Hopefully I'll get it early and share that with you guys. But uh, let's talk about what um, we know about the reel so far. Now, um, a couple of months ago, a subscriber commented in one of my videos and asked me a question. And he asked if I thought that they would ever come out with a Corrado DC. Now, to be honest, I told him um, I don't know, but I really doubted it would happen. And the reason I doubted it would happen was because that if Shimano came out with a Corrado DC, I assumed that they would just take a Scorpion DC from Japan, rebadge it, recolor it, and call it a Corrado DC, and then slap $100 onto the price for the warranty. So basically that would mean that the reel would cost $350 um, if it came to America. And I know that we tend not to like to spend a lot of money on reels here, so I didn't think it would happen. So Shimano just totally uh, shocked me um, with the introduction of the Corrado DC, and it is an entirely new and separate reel from the Scorpion DC. So let's go over it. Okay, so basically, as you can see, the Corrado DC is based on the very latest current Shimano Corrado K frame. And it looks like it's got the same coloring, which is that satin black. And as you can see, it's got um, the same super comfy grips. It's got the same um, spool tension. It's got the same spool color. And apparently they changed the color of the drag star and the handle to match the green of the spool. Not sure if I like it or not, but I really don't care at this point. I just want to get one in my hands and cast it. And one change from the current Corrado K is they made the spool capacity, uh, the line capacity, shallower. As you can see, it's a 150 size compared to 200 size. Now, generally, that happens in DC reels because um, the DC unit on the spool tends to um, take up some space. So DC reels tend to be shallower than the non-DC counterparts. And and that's kind of good because it's going to offset some of the weight that's going to be gained onto the spool with the DC unit. So less line to offset some of the weight of that electromagnet. Okay, so um, it looks like it's going to have 6 plus 1 bearings. It looks like the bearing count's about the same. Now they claim the weight is going to be um, just 0.2 ounces more at 7.8. I'm really skeptical about that because, uh, yeah, when a DC um, reel comes out versus its counterpart, it gains some weight because of that the microprocessor and the the electromagnet that uh, they put in it. Now, um, 
for example, the Metanium MGL weighs about 6 ounces, while the Metanium DC weighs almost 7. So it gained almost a full ounce. But uh, like I said, I don't really care. I just want to get one in my hand and cast it. As you can see, um, because it's not based on the Scorpion DC in Japan, um, the Scorpion DC uses the old Corrado iframe. And uh, yeah, now let's go over some other differences and that's the, the gearing. Now since the Scorpion, I'm sorry, since the Corrado DC is going to be based off the Corrado K, it's going to have the same micro module brass gears that give the Shimano Corrado K um, the head and shoulders smoothness and power above any other reel in its class. Um, and it looks like the Scorpion DC does not have micro gears. Now I have a Scorpion DC and I can tell you that's super smooth as well. But uh, yeah, the Scorpion DC, I'm sorry, the Crotto DC is going to have the micro module brass gears. It's going to come in three different ratios. I believe the same ratios as the Crotto K, the 6.2, the 7.4, and then the ultra fast 8.5. Now, because of the line capacity decrease, it's going to hold 110 yards of 12 pound versus the, let me see, the Corrado K's. It says it holds 110 yards of 14 pound because of the 200 capacity. Okay, so let's talk about the biggest difference between the Scorpion DC and the Corrado DC and that is the DC brake system. Now the Scorpion DC has the latest IDC5 system that it shares with the much more expensive Metanium DC and it has three different line modes you can choose from and within each line mode there's five different brake settings within the line mode giving it a maximum of 15 adjustments. Now, the Corrado DC, um, Shimano lists it as having the IDC4. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Shimano's various iterations of the DC braking, the IDC4 was last seen, I believe, in the, the previous Metanium DC, and it only had four settings. And I'm going to stick a picture of it here for you so you guys can see. Now basically, if you can look the four settings, there's L, there's M, there's A, and then there's W. So the L stood for long cast, the M stood for, I believe, middle distance or medium cast, the A stood for all around, and the W stands for wind or windy conditions. And there's no other additional, you know, fine-tuning adjustment like you have on the Scorpion DC. So if that's the same system that um, is in the, the Corrado DC, then that explains why the Corrado DC is so affordable at only $250, um, making this the cheapest DC reel in history. So I'm really excited about that. And hopefully I'll be one of the first ones to get one just like I was lucky enough to be one of the first ones to get the Corrado K um, and share that with you guys. But uh, that seems to be um, all the information that I have so far. I don't have any information on, you know, handle length or anything like that. But once again, $250 and you get a reel with a microcomputer in it from Shimano so that's uh, <laughs> that's something there now let's go over some other iCast rumors now rumor has it that the Metanium DC is going to be coming over as well now I find that pretty shocking because I predict that if the Metanium DC came over it would be about 600 bucks so hopefully Shimano will lower that price but it really doesn't matter to me because um, I already have a Metanium DC. The reel's badass. 
But I don't know if anyone's going to pay 600 bucks for it. Okay, so let's talk about the Aldebaran 50 MGL again. Now, I don't see anything listed on Shimano USA's website for this reel. I don't see anything listed on Tackle Warehouse for this reel. They put the 50, the regular Aldebaran 50, uh, back on Tackle Warehouse, but only in the 6.5 ratio. All the high gears are gone. So I, I'm pretty confident they're going to bring the MGL over. There's some guy over in Europe selling one on eBay, and he's wanting like almost 400 bucks. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's coming over. Let's cross our fingers for all us Aldebaran fans because um, with that MGL spool and the brakes, that thing will literally cast all the line off of um, anything over 3 eighths of an ounce and it really needed more line capacity. Okay, so let's talk about another reel. And that reel is something that's been leaked um, for the past couple of months, but there was just really one picture. And that is the Abu Garcia Revo Ike. Ike is basically the Revo Mike Iconelli. So there's not very many pictures out on this reel, but I was able to do some snooping and get a couple of newer pictures and let's take a look at it. Now it's going to have this really cool um, purplish chameleon effect paint job as you can see. And it's, I don't know if you guys um, saw the Mustangs with this paint job, but like at some angles it'll be purple, some angles it'll be greenish blue. But uh, it looks like it's going to have purple accents on the spool. It's going to have 10 ball bearings plus one roller bearing, a aluminum frame, C6 carbon palm and aluminum side plates, the power stack carbon matrix drag system, the D2 Dura gear design that's also made of brass, uh, ever slick coated pinion shaft and paw. Now, this is going to have the IVCB6L braking system according to this information. So that's the, tra the um, centrifugal brakes. And I'm not sure uh, how accurate that is. Um, it looks like the spool, well it doesn't say anything about the spool, but it looks like it's going to be about 7.5 ounces. And it's going to hold about 12 pound, I mean 145 yards of 12 pound line. It's going to have big line capacity. Now, I really like the color. I don't know. I'm looking on a, at a European website for this information, so I don't have the pricing yet in in American dollars. But I don't think it's going to be super affordable. Let me tell you that much. But yeah, for all you Revo fans, it looks like you're going to get a really uh, slick-looking latest Gen 4 Revo with a slick paint job. That's the Revo Ike Signature Casting Reels. And these are all the pictures that I could pull up on it and all the information that I could find on that reel for all you Abu Garcia fans. Now, over in the Daiwa camp, um, I don't know if this is a real, a real reel or not. I know that sounds weird. But uh, there is the Daiwa CG80. And this is a new reel from Daiwa that's listed at only $99. Now this reel has been only listed in one place for the last couple of months and that's the American Legacy um, website and there's only one picture of it. Now when this picture came out a lot of people were speculating that this was a Daiwa reel made by the Korean factory Doyo um, because of a couple of um, the styling and I believe the gear ratio. Now to me it looks like a um, the top plate looks like a die with Steve's. But uh, let's go over the information found on American Legacy's website. Now this is only going to be $99. That's kind of strange that they'll have the Fuego CT at $99. Then they'll have this one at $99. Now they say it's going to weigh 6.5 ounces. It's going to have a composite frame, meaning some kind of graphite frame. It's going to have 10 ball bearings. Um, and a 7.5 to 1 gear ratio. 
So um, that's really the only specifications that I can find on this thing. Um, I've heard that uh, they a lot of people saw this reel at the Bassmaster Classic. I don't know if that's true or not. But it's kind of strange that they're going to release this reel to compete against their own Fuego. So I don't know if they're going to do anything with the Fuego or not. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, yeah, the Daiwa CG80. And, and on American Legacy's website, they have they said that it would be available in May. But apparently it's still on back order. So maybe that was a boo-boo or a mistake on or American Legacy's website. They shouldn't have listed it. But uh, I'm expecting them to announce this at iCast. Now, as I said before in my previous video, the Daiwa Tatula CT Type R has uh, went on clearance at Tackle Warehouse. So I'm thinking that the corporate spies at Daiwa um, probably got wind that Shimano was coming out with their Corrado DC and may maybe they'll have something up their sleeve as far as a new Tatula to combat the new Corrado DC. And I hope it's not some SV reel of, or variant or whatever, anything to do with SV because if it's an, an SV spool then uh, it's not going to be able to stand with this uh, Corrado DC in casting. But uh, I can't wait to see what Daiwa has cooked up to compete with the Corrado K and anything else that they have. Okay guys, that's all I know for now. I will give you more information as I get it. But uh, yeah, it looks like this year's iCast is actually going to be something worth getting excited about. Because I'm not usually excited about iCast. I'm usually excited about the Japanese fishing shows in February where all the real good stuff comes out. Okay guys, thanks a lot.